Father, we just want to thank you for this opportunity granted unto us once again to come before that throne of grace. We pray, Father, for divine impartation of your grace and of your word. Feed us, O God, according to the measure of your grace. In blessing, Father, we pray that, Lord, make us a blessing. In Jesus' name we call it down. Amen. We are in the generation today that a lot of us are looking into many areas and dimensions in life to be able to break forth and to break through as children of God. The Lord wants us to walk upon his will, upon his counsel, and upon his precedent. The Lord has mandated us the day we gave our life to Jesus to make us credit worthy here on earth. In other words, he bestowed prosperity in every facet of your life. Now the question here is that why aren't we walking and why is it that our life is not depicting that prosperous demeanor or attitude that he wants us to prevail here on earth? In other words, we have been endowed with the wisdom of God, with the grace of God to be able to break forth. But the reason why we are not breaking through as children of God, the reason why we are not walking in that area of authority, in the level of wealth, in the level of great success, in the level of good health, is because we have neglected the word of God. Today, the Lord instructed his people that if I'm going to be a blessing to you, if I'm going to be a fortitude in your life, if I'm going to be the one, the guarantor in your life that will guarantee your success in life, you must depend absolutely on me. That was why he spoke to Joshua that Joshua too should abide by his commandments, by his ordinance, by his precept, so that he will be blessed beyond measure. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 opens us to understand what God wants us to do and why God is committed in making us prosperous. Joshua 1 8. Yes, please. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, I want us to understand that. This is a sum total of our prosperity. This is a sum total of the blessings that God has given unto us as his people. He said, make sure that this book of the law, in other words, make sure that the word of God, your Bible, your scriptures are not out of your mouth. So in other words, you and I are mandated by the will of God, by the counsel of God. That we must, we should always have the word of God placed within our mouth. In other words, the word of God, anything that we do, anything that we say from our mouth must be in alignment with the word of God. In other words, must be in line with the word of God or in other words, must be in consonant with the word of God. But then when you meditate upon the word of God day and night, the word of God, in other words, dear, the Lord is simply saying to you that you should never come into a point of in your life as a child of God or as a Christian where you leave your mind fallow. Let me repeat myself. It should never be the norm. It should never be your yardstick, it should never be part and parcel of you as a believer to leave your mind fallow. Your mind must always be occupied with the scriptures. 
In other words, when you are at work and you are not doing anything or when you are at work and your mind is restless, your mind must automatically come upon the word of God. You must begin to either channel yourself into prayer and look for a scripture that you can meditate upon. Meditate upon the word of God day and night that thou mayest observe. So when you are meditating upon the word of God and it becomes your routine, it becomes part and parcel of your life, it is the word of God that will cause you to walk in accordance with the will of God and the Holy Spirit can have the ability to direct you. You can never receive the voice of God or the mandate of God without the presence of the word of God. God will never speak to you out of any context. He speaks to you in line with his word. Forever and ever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. And when the word of God becomes part and parcel of our lives, the word that is written unto us, for it is this same word of God that will make you prosperous. Because the word of God will make sure that when you are investing, you don't make mistakes. It is the same, same word of God that will direct you to the right peoples that you will never be ditched. Or somebody will not steal your hard-earned currency or money from you. A lot of believers have been defrauded. A lot of people have wasted their resources, their precious strength, their might the authority and their power. They have given it to somebody to feast on it and they have been deprived of their benefit. It happens to you because you never allow the word of God to become the precedent in your life. If the word of God was truly directing you, you would never make mistakes because the Bible said in the book of Isaiah, 11, he said that the Lord will grant unto you quick understanding. So it means that when somebody is speaking to you, you can discern. You can cipher what the person is about to tell you. Before they come close to you, you know what they are thinking. It is the word of God that opens you up. That is why he's saying to us, we should fall in love with the word of God. Now, what was God given unto Joshua by his inscription here. Joshua, in this particular scripture, we want to caption something here today by the grace of God. We want to speak about the wisdom for kingdom prosperity. Wisdom for kingdom prosperity. Remember, I said, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospereth. Now, your prosperity is dependent on the amount of scriptures. The amount of the word of God that you have in your spirit, not your pastor, not your prophet, not your apostle, not your archbishop, not your pope. It is your connection with the Bible. He said, this book of the law, the Bible should not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on your Bible day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in the Bible. For then thou shalt make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Now, when you go to verse 9, verse 9 also concludes something interesting there, verse 9. Joshua 1 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So when we have the word of God in our spirit, man, it builds strength within us, and we are not afraid of the enemy. We are not afraid of anything that comes into our life. That is why God will grant you that wisdom to prosper. We are speaking about wisdom for kingdom prosperity. Please underline this as we take off. Now, 
Joshua chapter 1 verses 8 to 9 makes us to understand that. True wisdom, please put this down. Let me try and give you an open preamble here. An open visitation from God's word. True wisdom is the gift of God. True wisdom is a gift of God. You cannot operate the wisdom without reasoning. You cannot operate the wisdom of God without reasoning. Study to show yourself approved unto God. As a workman who need not to fear by rightly dividing the word of truth. Let not this book of the law depart out of your mouth but meditate upon it day and night. Wisdom without reasoning. Or engaging in your senses. Wisdom without reasoning and engaging in your senses. In other words, when wisdom and reason, where wisdom and reasoning exist. Where wisdom and reasoning exist. There always exists wealth. Where wisdom and reasoning exist, there always exists wealth. W E A L T H. Always exists wealth. In other words, engage the wisdom of God by maintaining the attitude of prayer. The attitude of prayer. Revelation in expectance. Lay hold on resources of the word of God. Lay hold on the word of God. Resources of the word of God. By other concordance, by other rendering versions by other books that will enlighten you in the knowledge of God's will. Materials that will lead to wisdom in your life so that you will have the required answers you need. Let not this book of the Lord depart out of your mouth. So it is our responsibility. It is our prerogative. To always make sure, maintain ourselves that whatever we would do to assimilate the scriptures into us, meditating in the Greek rendering mention, uh, version simply means mental. Like the goat. If somebody has seen a goat before, that is what they do. They quick pick food up quickly and then they eat what they, what they can find and then they put it into their inner chamber. Then when they go and sit down, they begin to throw it up one after the other. Then they take their time to chew it so that it, meant it goes into their physical body. The Lord is saying to you, grab every wisdom of God's word. You must be selective in the kind of preachers you listen to. Let me repeat myself carefully. Be selective to the kind of men of God you listen to. It is not every man of God or every woman of God you waste your time to listen to. You must be selective. You must pick those that can enhance your inner man and your spirit man. Challenge you in the word of God so that you will buy into the word of God so that the book of the law will not depart from your mouth. Meditating upon the word. Men and women that will challenge you to learn the scriptures. Not men and women that tell stories. Now, how can I have the wisdom for the kingdom prosperity? This was what the Lord was instructing Joshua. This was what he was instructing Joshua. How can I have the wisdom for kingdom prosperity. Number one. From this rendering of scripture from Joshua chapter 1 verse 
8 and 9, he makes us to understand that God's wisdom is the principal thing. God's wisdom is the principal thing. For us to obtain wisdom for kingdom prosperity, we must understand that God's wisdom is the principal thing. Why am I saying so? Go with me to Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 13 to 16. Proverbs chapter 3, 13 to 16. Proverbs 3, 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that giveth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. So he's saying to you, you must invest in the word of God. You must invest in materials of scriptures. You must invest in true men of God that will teach you the precepts and the wisdom and the counsel of God. Verse 15. Please. Verse 15. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Verse 16. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. My God. So in other words, the reason why we are not rich, the reason why we are not breaking through and breaking forth, ladies and gentlemen, it is not about, let me make you to understand one thing, it is not about your praying and it is not about your fasting. Let me repeat myself carefully. It is not about the 14 days fast, the 50 days fast. There are people that today are fasting 150 days. They are doing it more than Jesus himself. Ladies and gentlemen, your prosperity is in your commitment to the scriptures. When God sees that you are spending time to study his work and working at the same time, he will grant you. Remember, it is God that gives you the ability, the power to make wealth. And it comes through wisdom. We are speaking to you about the wisdom for kingdom prosperity. And I said for you to walk in kingdom prosperity, the first important prerequisite here is that God's wisdom is the principal thing. You must love the word of God. Now take note of this. When Solomon was making known of the wisdom of God or the counsel of the word of God, he used she. He used she. He did not use he. Because he used she, it means productivity. A woman has the ability to produce. A woman has the ability to incubate. A woman, a woman has the ability to nurture. And a woman has the ability to keep and to produce after its like and after its own likeness. So he's saying to us that when we have the word of God in our life, in our mouth, we will obtain length of days. So anybody who loves the scriptures, you will live long. Because you will have health. God has got health in his right hand. And at his left hand, he grants unto you riches. That is why he says he grants unto the right in your old age. You shall still be fat and flourishing. In other words, in your old age, you will still maintain and you will always be a blessing to your people. Now, Proverbs chapter 3, 13 to 16 is summed up in the book of James. James put this carefully and nicely in a statement. James put all these scriptures together in one main statement. In James chapter 3 and verse 15. James chapter 3 and verse 15. 
James 3.15 This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. So they are wisdom when you, you don't seek the counsel of God. They are certain wisdom that will come upon your life that will destroy you. Will take away the favor of God because God is saying to you, the wisdom he has given unto you, it's not earthly. It is not sensual and it is not devilish. But the wisdom that God has given unto you, he has given you wisdom that will maintain and cause you to break forth and you will walk in the glory of God. Now, going back to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 to 16, we are speaking about God's wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 to 16, can be, it's explained, it's, we have three important meanings to this particular scripture. This scripture means three important things. Proverbs chapter 3, 13 to 16 have three important factors to read or it means three important things here. Number one. Solomon made us to understand that there are three kinds of wisdom. And James made us to understand so. We are speaking about wisdom for kingdom prosperity. And I said, God's wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs chapter 3, 13 to 16 makes us to understand now. Proverbs 3, 13 to 16 means three important things. Number one. James, a Proverbs made us to understand or Solomon made us to understand that there are three kinds of wisdom. Number one, we have what we call heavenly wisdom. We have heavenly wisdom. Number two, we have earthly wisdom. And number three, we have demonic wisdom that is where James made us to understand in James chapter 3 verse 15 so in other words these three kinds of wisdom James said that the wisdom descended not from above so you have understood you have to understand this that they are wisdom that comes from the earth and they are wisdom that are sensual or wisdom that comes from demonic activities. Solomon made us to understand that there are three kinds of wisdom. We have the heavenly wisdom, we have the earthly wisdom, and we have demonic wisdom. Number two, true wisdom, T-R-U-E, true wisdom, is a gift of God. True wisdom is a gift from God. Why am I saying this? Let me explain myself. If I say true wisdom is a gift from God, I simply mean heavenly wisdom is made available to you when you speak in other tongues. Heavenly wisdom is made available to you when you speak in other tongues. So in other words, for us to obtain the heavenly wisdom, for us to obtain heavenly counsel, we must be born again. We must be full of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon thee. And when the Holy Ghost comes upon thee, you obtain heavenly wisdom. Why am I saying this? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 to 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. 
1 Corinthians 2 6. Yes, ma'am. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught? Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Verse 8. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Ma, 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 ma. So when you and I obtain the wisdom of God, we speak mysteries. That is what I'm saying to you. True wisdom is the gift of God. Why? Because heavenly wisdom is made available to you when you speak in an unknown tongue. Let's go to watch this carefully. Verse 7. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in mystery. The Greek one will say mysterio. We speak things that the mind of man cannot comprehend or function. So when you have the wisdom of God, you have the ability to produce and you have the ability to prosper in other words that is why i said god gives you the wisdom to prosper your life can never be challenged you may do the same people may do the same business but god will give you a different idea concerning the same thing that people are selling but he will give you an idea that you will add it to what you are doing and you men and women will run and they will come for your merchandise it is by the level of your speaking so the, the amount of time you spend in speaking in an unknown tongue will open you up prosperity. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not about an oil that you have to go and purchase. It has nothing to do with any man of God or any woman of God that comes to town that have to call you. You have to pay extra money so that they pour oil on you for you to be blessed. Ladies and gentlemen, it is all a lie. The truth of the matter is that spend time yourself and pray in the scriptures because it said but we speak not the wisdom of God in mystery even the hidden wisdom which God has ordained before the world unto our glory and verse 8 verse 8 which, which none of these princes of this world know so God when you speak more in an unknown tongue it will grant you an idea. That is why you remember that the Lord said, As for me and my children, we are a sign and a wonder. Your prosperity. He said, Do not let the book of the Lord depart out of your mouth, but meditate upon my word day and night. And upon this you will obtain. He did not say a man of God will stand between you and your prosperity. Your prosperity is in your hands. The problem we have as a body of Christ today is that we have a bunch of lazy children of God. We are so lazy. Things of this world occupy us more than the things of the spirit. But if we can spend time in the things of the word of God, we will break through. Your prosperity is in your own hands. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are not prospering, it is not the devil. It is not any demon. It is not any power that is in your father's house and in your mother's house. You are not prospering because you are simply lazy. You love to sleep. You love to slumber. Today, charismatics and we, the body of Christ today, are so lazy that always we are waiting for somebody to tell you the mind of God for yourself. Whilst God has only opened you up so that he will speak directly to you. You don't need any man of God to give you the counsel of God. You are a child of God. And once you are a child, 
you have access to your father. We are very lazy as children of God. The Lord said, when you study my word, I will make you a blessing. I said, true wisdom is a gift of God. Now, it's a gift of God. Number one, I said, heavenly wisdom is made available to you when you speak in an unknown tongue. Is that correct? Okay, let me go a step further by explaining that the wisdom that is from above is superior above any kind of wisdom. The wisdom that is above is superior than any kind of wisdom. You will make your life prosperous. And God will prosper you in every ramification of your life. Because he will grant unto you wisdom when you go into his word. He will give you ideas. Your scope of life will be open. Your scope of ideas will be unique because God will grant unto you specific details and direction through his word. Because he said through the word of God, for you loving the word of God, you will make your own way prosperous and you will have good success. In other words, the God of wisdom will shed unique light and understanding on your path. The God of wisdom will share a unique light and wisdom upon your path. He will order your steps. He will put a light under your feet and it will direct you on the right path to go. As long as you stay in, con in connection with the word of God and with the Holy Ghost, you will never make mistakes. Nothing that belongs to you can be taken from you. No one can steal from you. Even if you lose something, you can leave it at a place you will go back and you will come and still find it there. Nobody can take anything that belongs to you because you are protected by the Lord. Wisdom for kingdom prosperity. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and 9 number 2 also means this. Number one, I was saying that God's wisdom is the principal thing. Have you got it? Number two, wealth, W-E-A-L-T-H, wealth, is found where wisdom dwells. My God. <laughs> wealth is found wherever wisdom dwells. Now, I want us to understand that Solomon made us to understand in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 to 16, he made us to understand who wisdom is. He is the counsel of the Lord. He is understanding because when man finds it and he gets the word of God, you obtain wisdom. So, in other words, wealth is found where wisdom dwells. Why am I saying this? Let me explain myself. I'll try and explain this particular everything with, in two ways. Let me try and explain it in two ways. Number one. I said wealth is found where wisdom dwells. Why? Number one. God is still giving his people knowledge and skill. God is still giving his people knowledge and skill. Just as he did to Daniel. He has provided a way for you to tap into his riches and his wealth. God is still making a way 
for his people with skill and with knowledge. Just as he did to Daniel. He has provided a way for his people to tap into his riches and into his wealth. So in other words, if we want to walk in the riches of God, because riches adds up to wealth. So in other words, God wants you to be rich and God wants us to be wealthy. Financially, physically, said I wish above all things that you prosper and even be in good health. Why is he still making it available to us as he did for Daniel? Go with me to Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. I'm speaking about wealth is found where wisdom dwells. Have you got that? Yeah. Daniel 1 17 please. Daniel 1 17. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. My God. Ladies and gentlemen, when we fall in love with the word of God, that is why I keep telling you, you don't need. You see, prophets are in the house of God to direct the church where the church is supposed to go. But when it comes to your own governmental council, your prophet is your Bible. Can I repeat myself? Your prophet is your Bible. Because when you study the Bible, meditate the word of God. Watch this carefully. This is what happened to Daniel. Watch this carefully. This is what you are going to become. The problem is that we are so lazy. We are lazy. Children of God will never have time to ask yourself this question. How many times, how many hours do you sit down to read your Bible? It is a shame and a disgrace for a child of God not being able to study scripture for at least an hour a day. You are a disgrace to God who died on the cross of Calvary. You are a disgrace. You are a shame. Watch this carefully. Daniel 1 7. Mm -hmm. As for these four children, mm -hmm. God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. My God. This is what God is. He said, As for these children, as for, children. as for you, God will give you knowledge and skill. In all learning and in all wisdom. So in your workplace, you will always work with understanding. You will work with excellence. The verse where the Bible said, the Lord gave his servant an excellent spirit. That you should always be somebody that in your workplace they will talk about. Wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and all dreams. Nothing will ever happen in your family without God revealing it first to you. He said, I will not do a thing except first I reveal it to my servant, the prophet. And the prophet whose lips are sealed. So in other words, that's why I sometimes have problem with people who call themselves prophet and they cannot keep secret. You are a joker. God will never speak to any man who has got a loose tongue. Can I repeat myself? The God that I know that I serve, the God that I've learned a little from his will and his counsel, he will never speak to a man who has got a loose tongue, who talks too much. Every man of God Every prophet that was used by God has few words because their words are consuming fire. They don't talk about people. They don't bring scandals. They don't destroy people. A true prophet never speaks about anybody. They speak about the determining counsel of God to God's people because they have the visions and understanding.
Wealth is found where wisdom dwells. Let me go further. Number two, let me explain it there. Two. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge can be found in Christ Jesus. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge can be found in Christ Jesus. Our prosperity is in the connection that we have with the Holy Ghost. All treasures of wisdom and knowledge can be found in Christ. Why? Because wisdom dwells in Christ Jesus. Wisdom dwells where Christ dwells. And therefore wealth is inside of you. Wealth is therefore inside of you wanting to come out if you let it through the word of God. All treasures of wisdom and knowledge are found in Christ Jesus. Why did I say so? Because wisdom dwells in Christ Jesus. And it dwells in where Christ Jesus dwells. Jesus dwells in you. Therefore, wealth is automatically inside you. And it's always waiting to come out. Are you going to let it come out? Let not this book of the law Depart out of your mouth. But meditate upon the word of God day and night. Observe to do according to its factor. And then you will make your way successful. And you will have long life. We are speaking about wisdom for kingdom prosperity. Wisdom for kingdom prosperity. Number three. Reasoning makes you rich. Reasoning makes you rich. R-E-A-S-O-N-I-N-G Reasoning makes you rich. Reasoning makes you rich. Why? Proverbs 24, 3 to 5. Proverbs 24, 3. Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. My God. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So you need riches and what? You need what? Wisdom. Wisdom. And you need what? Knowledge. Uh -huh. Verse 5. And a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. A man of knowledge will always increase in strength. If you have the knowledge of the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, you will prosper anywhere you go. That is why the enemy will do everything within his might. Not to allow you to study the word of God. He will keep you busy from studying the scriptures. Even to some of us that have got devotions that are given to you freely. It would distract you even not to read it. Because when you read it, it will prosper your life. Give you grace. Build shelter around you. Build defense around you for the day. So he will take your mind away from the word of It will give you a course not to even read it. Because when you don't have wisdom, you are not wise. And you will not have strength. 
Yea, a man of knowledge increased in strength. I said, reasoning makes you rich. In Proverbs chapter 24, verses 3 to 4, this particular scripture, Lord help us. I see four important things in this particular scripture. I see four things here in this scripture. I see four things here in this scripture. Let me try and deal with it for the sake of time. If not, next week we continue by the grace of God. I say reasoning makes you rich. Now let's go into Proverbs chapter, please write this down, Proverbs chapter 24, 3 to 4. Let me try and explain the scripture. It's about five different meanings to it. It has five different meanings to it. Number one, it means this. The creative abilities within you will only come to light when you adequately exercise your senses of authority from the word of God. The creative abilities within you will only come to light when you adequately exercise your senses of authority from the word of God. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. Then he said, beloved, it is God that gives you the power, the ability to make wealth. The more you fall in love with the word of God, the more he grants you the senses, the ability the creative mandate to create things for your prosperity. For your prosperity. Precious ones, we must love to fall in love with the word of God. I'm speaking about wisdom. Let's go back to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 to 9. Time will not permit us but I want to give you a few conclusions. We can continue another time. Joshua 1 8. Yes, please. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9. No. Okay, let's, li let's leave. Verse 8 for now. I want to conclude by saying true wisdom is a gift of God. You cannot operate wisdom without reasoning or engaging in your senses. Where wisdom and reasoning exist, there is also wealth existing as well. Engage the wisdom of God by maintaining a scriptural precedence, an attitude of prayer. And by so doing, you will receive revelation with divine expectation and with a great expectant heart. God will grant you the ability to be able to sustain. Fall in love with the word. Love the Bible. Spend time studying the scriptures because upon this you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Time will not permit me to continue but we will continue another time next week. May the Lord keep you and strengthen you. Lord, I pray that that which I was not able to finish with your people cleanse me with your blood. Give me another opportunity, Father, to stand and to speak your mind. Give us your counsel so that, Lord, we will love your word and we will embrace you, Holy Ghost, wherever we are. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Remember, you are a property of the Holy Ghost. Satan, back off. In Jesus' name, until we come your way again next week, love the word of God. Stay
study the word of God and God will always show himself strong and mighty and you will always prosper. We love you. In Jesus name. Amen.